So in this video, we are going to be creating this shot right here. So I hope you're as excited as I am and let's get started straight away. And now that we've got this beautiful render, it's time to make the second one straight away. So I'm going to turn off this plane and now we have our product in midair. I'm going to select all of this and make sure that we are not selecting any light. So if you turn off the overlays, you can select it like this. You will have everything you need. Let's place this into its own collection. So I'm going to call this Dior Nude Hydra or whatever it's called. And what I will do then is I will duplicate it, bring it slightly towards this side. So what we want to do first is go over here, convert to mesh. So I'm simply going to connect everything together. And now everything is one solid object. And that's great because we can now easily manipulate this and turn it around. Now I'm first going to select this, press M, place it in its own collection, new bottle. That's what I'm going to call it. The Ornith Hydra can be turned off and we can use it later if we happen to need it. We've got a cool little bottle right here, but we should make a very cool slimy type of effect. I don't know, it looks lotion-like. We're going to make it mesh, plane, let's create it. Let's scale this upwards. Let's bring this down and scale it up some more. Maybe something like this, S and Y. Let's make sure that there's enough space right here. So let's first make a couple of loop cuts like this, or maybe two. Then I will go over here, subdivide and subdivide it a hundred times. I want a lot of geometry for this. I'm going to select this entire edge. I will go into the data object properties tab, select the vertex groups and assign this. So now this is assigned, but we also want some shape keys. So I'm going out of edit mode, plus, plus, now go back into edit mode and we're going all the way to this little vertex right here. I will press on one, I will select it, shift S, cursor to select it. Let's select this entire line, set the pivot point to 3D cursor and I will scale this on the Y axis as Y.7, something like that. So now we have a different key on our shape key instead of the basis. So this key is different, as you can see something changed than the original one. And that's great, because now we can turn this up. Let's go over to the timeline. Let's place a keyframe right here, frame one. And frame 35, we can do the other one. Set the slider to one, press I once again, and now it will move. But let's go back to the first frame. Let's go to the physics properties tab and type cloth. Now here we have a cloth. I'm simply going to set the quality steps to 10. I will go over here to the shape, set the pin group to the vertex group we just created. There should be only one. Let's go to collisions. Let's turn on self collisions. Let's set the quality to five. Decrease the distance and the distance on this one as well. Then let's scroll down, go to the field weights and turn off gravity all the way to zero. Then I will go over to the cache. I do believe this bake will be enough. I'm going to set it to 150 frames to give it some time and then I will bake this. So we have got the render right here. Let's click on play and see what it does. All right, it's quite extreme. I think it was a bit too much, uh, this strength right here. Uh, so I'm going to turn off the shape keys because with the shape keys enabled you cannot apply the cloth. I'm going right into the modifier section and apply this cloth and then we can move it around. Uh, right now we are going to do the materials for this. You need to take whatever time you need in order to get a good simulation. So let's go into the shader editor. Let's press new. And in this case I'm going to add a gradient texture. The gradient texture, control T. And let's see where it's occurring. So let's go into the render view. And I see something going on right there, but it's not very clear. Let's add a color ramp. And it's going from top to bottom. We want to have it come from left to right. So I'm going to select the X and Y in the rotation of the mapping node and set this to 90. Now we have something going from black to white, and that's exactly what we needed. I'm going to plug this into the base color, print all BSDF into the surface. And now I will change this color to be a bit more creamy. And I will change this color to be a bit more brown, which is actually orange but darkened. Then I will bring it towards this side and look through the camera and see what's going on. Something like this. Let's bring this closer as well. And maybe add another color by clicking on plus and changing this to whatever type of color is in between. Some mocha type color, I believe. And the name of the game is play around with the color ramps until we get to the desired result, which is something like this. Very cool. Let's Turn the roughness down because it should be a bit more shiny. And now it looks a whole lot more creamy. Very cool. Now I'm going to scale this up and perhaps lay it somewhere over there. Make sure that we can make an image out of this. So I'll take this one as well. Let's bring it towards this side. Slightly lower than that one. Let's do the same for these. Something like this. And then let's add the final tree. 
g and y, g and x, g and y. Let's select all of these and slide them over just a little bit. And let's bring all of this down as well. Let's select all of these place it in its own collection, bottles collection. I've got all of these selected, G and C, until they start to move into this cloth. Let's click on the cloth, go to sculpt mode, select the draw brush, and now we are going to make some adjustments here to make it seem as if they are actually in this environment. And make sure that we are generating some shadows that look natural for this type of environment, as if it's actually laying in this lotion. Awesome. So now all that's left to do is to change the color. So let's select this first one, go into the materials. I do reckon that the one with the emission is the right material, so this one. Let's copy this and let's change the color. This one has a bit of a pinkish tone. Copy this and let's change the color. Something like that. Then do the same for this one, copy it. Change the color. So now that we have all the bottles with their own respective colors and they are all dipped into this lotion, we can add some lighting in order to make it better. So, the first thing I will do is add an area of light. Let's increase the power until we can actually see something. Something like this. Now we get all these cool looking shadows in the lotion as well and this starts to make a lot more sense. So let's scale it up. Let's turn it into a disc in order to get some natural looking reflections instead of those weird looking square ones. And now let's create a new area of light right over here on top of this. Let's place it in its own collection. Bottles, lighting, max. And then I will go over to light linking, select collection, go to the bottles lighting max. Collection should be bottles collections, add light linking. And now this light should only work on the bottles, but not on the plane, as we can see. Very good, I'm going to make it quite powerful. And let's see what we can achieve. If we bring it upwards, we now get some nice lighting on the sides of these, I like that. Let's duplicate it again and let's bring it on top of this. Let's make it an ellipse. Let's scale it up. Let's scale it down. Now it's a bit too visible in the glass, I reckon. So let's make it slightly less powerful. Let's rotate it just a little bit and bring it towards the side. And now the final thing that you could do if you would like to do that is change the IOR in the glass material. If you set it to 0.8, for example, it also looks pretty good and we get some different type of results. So you can play around with that. I think 1.5 was fine as well, but definitely give it a shot to see if your render becomes better. So in this video, you learned how to use a cloud simulation in order to generate some lotion type for the background. You learned how to use the gradient node in order to get this texture right. And finally, we changed some colors and made some lighting effects. And that's basically it. So I hope you learned a lot in this tutorial. And if you did, I highly recommend clicking on subscribe and watching this video next.